Unless you're watching this before the 1850s, you know about germs. If you are watching this before the 1850s, this will all be new to you. At least you've got the invention of the TV to look forward to. Oh, and say hi to Louis Pasto for me. Anyway, germs are microorganisms that live all around us. They're impossible to detect without technology, but they can make us very sick. Hardly seems fair, does it? And they're not just in the obvious places, like pub toilets or behind a scruffy teenager's ears. In fact, research has shown there are around 200 times more fecal bacteria on the average kitchen cutting board than on a toilet seat. Hashtag blur, sick face emoji. No one's putting fecal bacteria there on purpose, we hope. They obviously spread easily without us even realizing. And besides it being gross, the consequences are deadly serious. It makes sense then that there are a lot of guidelines when it comes to food safety. And because you work in an environment that has food, you need to know them and follow them. Yep, even if you don't handle the food yourself, you're still legally required to guarantee safe food to customers. You don't want old Johnny Law after you, do you? Didn't think so. Luckily, we're here to help you. Here's the menu for this evening. Your amuse-bouche. This course is going to run you through the common hazards within food safety. For the starter, it'll help you determine your role in the process of keeping food and people safe. The main course. We'll look at some good hygiene practices and some not so good ones. This includes personal hygiene as well as how and when to report illness. For dessert, you'll learn about safe storage, cross-contamination and temperature control, as well as keeping your work area clean and pest-free. How about a digestif? A quick roundup and quiz? Have we got your mouth watering? Let's dig in. Mm, it's tea time and I'm getting hungry right now. I think I should order some food. Yes, let's see what's the menu here. Wow, hop sing cream crackers. Well, this is my favorite biscuit. So nah, I don't think I need to order the food anymore. But this is quite a lot for me to eat alone. Maybe I can call my neighbor to eat this with me. So let's see who's online. Oh, great, Huda is online. Hello Da, are you free right now? Yes I am, what's up? Do you want to join me eating Hapsang cream cracker? Wait, did you say Hapsang cream cracker? Yes, what's wrong? about the ingredient seems fine to me wheat milk corn it says that biscuit is not safe to eat as it contains plastic and can lead to cancer are you sure about it huda i have never heard of this news before you haven't heard anything about this it's on news aina well i can show you the news if you want well sure send it to me please about this but if I'm not mistaken we can visit the Hub Seng Cream Crackers factory right because I want a confirmation that this biscuit is really safe to eat before I consume it. Yes I know we need to make sure that the food we are going to consume is really safe to eat. Food safety is important. very important in our daily life. Consumers are concerned about getting access to not only nutritious foods but also food that are safe to consume. Food safety is very important as it helps to protect consumer 
from the risk of foodborne illness. It also helps to prevent consumers from the risk of health-related conditions such as allergy and even death. And accordingly, food producers must ensure the safety of their products and reduce the risk of consumer exposure to contaminated or unsafe food. What is actually food safety, Huda? Do you know that many consumer studies in different countries reveal that more than half of the consumers believe food safety is very important? Do you know that it's like a producer of personal friends who will take product for shipment, inspection, batch testing of food products, the safety and supplier audit, and maintaining certain product management system are equally important to assure quality and safety. Research are also has shown that 88% of consumers are more likely to purchase food products with labels that clearly state that they have met or exceeded applicable food safety standards. Now, let's go to the factory before it is late. Welcome, both of you. Welcome. Hi, hello. Hi, hello, Miss. So, what can we do to help you guys today? We are here to know if herbs and cream cracker are causing cancer. According to the latest news, the Hong Kong Consumer Council (HKCC) claimed that cancer-causing substances were detected in biscuit and crackers, including those produced by the Nation Group. Is it true? Ah, I can tell now. Both of you guys are really curious about this matter, right? 
Well, Miss Lisa, do you find to explain this matter to them? Well, that basically the Hong Kong Consumer Council they claim that the 60 packs of free packed biscuits and crackers of Hobson contains the <coughs> cancer inducing element, which are the glycerol and acrylamide. What is that? Hmm. To explain that, let us jump to chemistry a little bit. Okay. This little ester are contaminants from a high temperature above 200 Celsius during the refining process of vegetable oils. The glycidyl is an ester that present in the baked food product, for example cookies, are largely derived from the refined oils in the, ingredient, in the ingredients. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, classifies glycidyl as a group 2A agent, which is probably carcinogenic to humans. It is considered as a genotoxic carcinogen in experimental animals, but there is insufficient evidence of its carcinogenicity in humans for this hopsin cream crackers biscuits. And acalamine usually a contaminant produced at over 120 degrees Celsius high temperature in food processing, such as uh, deep frying, toasting, roasting, and grilling. Study shows that uh, relatively high levels of acalamides was present in varieties of fried and carbohydrate-rich food. The International Agency of uh, Research on Cancer classifies acalamide as a group 2A agent, which is probably carcinogenic to humans. Acrylamide is a probable carcinogen that's created when starchy food, such as potatoes, root vegetables, bread, are cooked at high temperature, so frying, grilling, baking, roasting, toasting. Acrylamide is a natural chemical which is formed when you heat certain food, such as starchy foods like potatoes and root vegetables, when they are cooked to above 120 degrees, they naturally form acrylamide. It's part of the cooking process which improves the texture and the taste of food, but a byproduct of that is acrylamide. So we know that uh, acrylamide causes cancer in rats and mice in the laboratory. Uh, we know that it interacts with the DNA, with the genetic material in the cells. And because of what we know about acrylamide, it's probable that it could also cause cancer in people. The levels of acrylamide that are present in our diet are higher than we would be comfortable with. We would prefer them to be lower. And so that's why the Food Standards Agency is encouraging the industry to try to reduce acrylamide levels in processed foods. And we wish to raise awareness amongst consumers of the things that they could do that might help them to reduce their exposure to acrylamide in food. Because it's naturally occurring, acrylamide has always been present in our food and always will. But the longer and hotter we cook food, the more acrylamide there'll be. So knowing that, we can all take steps to reduce our acrylamide intake. First of all, go for gold. Cook food till it's a golden yellow colour, no darker, because it's the process that makes food brown that also leads to higher levels of acrylamide. If you're cooking pre-prepared food, then follow the instructions on pack for cooking and reheating. Third, eat a, a balanced and healthy diet. Varying your diet will help you manage the levels of acrylamide. And finally, don't store your potatoes in the fridge. And that's because in the cold, potatoes undergo a process called cold sweetening that increases the level of chemicals in potatoes that are the precursors for acrylamide when you cook them. So your potatoes take them out of the fridge, store them in the dark, store them cool, but above six degrees. We will continue to keep you up to date and informed of any developments as we discover them. Taking these small steps helps to protect you and your family's health. So both of them are dangerous to human rights? Well, glycidol and acrylamides are in Arverton contaminants which is not for additives. Whereas acrylamide is produced in carbohydrate-rich food during high temperature processing. 
and the consumption of them on a daily basis over a prolonged period may cause adverse health effects. At present, there is inadequate evidence for these food contaminants to cause human cancer. So, don't be panic. Trust our religion for that. The Glacidol and Akalaman shown to be potentially genetically in experimental animals, but there's limited evidence uh, for their carcinogenic in humans. It is impossible to fully avoid exposure to this contaminant in daily food consumption, but eating a balanced and varied diet instead of a single food item can help us to stay healthy and reduce the health risk posed by them. But how about the council discovered that 40% of the products examined had nutritional labels that were misleading? Thankfully, since the Hubsang company has already acquired since 1958, so therefore they are very experienced and professional. The Hubsang industry subsidiary Hubsang also had Makanan, they say that. They will extend their fullest cooperation to the authorities to investigate if they are required to do so, as long as their product quality and safety. They wish to ensure that their special chemical manufacture and are marketed in Malaysia are fit for human consumption and in compliance with the uh, local regulation, um, quality standards, and food safety standards. Hmm. Does the KKM take any action of this matter? Yes, for sure. It's a Malaysian product. Even the Ministry of Health make up the move by conducting a verification on the premise of Hapseng to prove the HKCC's validity, statement's validity. So, do we need to avoid eating Hapseng biscuit? No, 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 you shouldn't do that. Actually, this issue has been around for decades. It's just a conspiracy to bring down the price market as we, in Malaysia, has been using palm oil to make the cracker. For real? Yup. Till today, not a single scientific article talks about the advantages of palm oil and hop scenes. So, they can't be. Uh, how can we trust you? Let me tell you something. Our Malaysian palm oil is the greatest one in the world. Okay? Okay. This is because the linoleic and linoleic acid in our palm oil is low. You know? Acid is low. When it is low, it can withstand high temperature and also long lasting and also make them not easy to oxidize. Yeah. Because of this, I can tell you probably the other big countries, the other countries very jealous of us, you know. That's why they try very hard to downgrade our product by doing this uh, Statement. This is statement. Okay. Trust me. Then, how about the rumors of plastic in the biscuits? Thanks to both of you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.